what? What is this extra video that Mrs. Wyant is posting today? Well, I told you in language that today is about enjoying books and enjoying writing. And I remembered we had been enjoying this book together in class and then it was March break and now you're not coming to school and I'm sad. So I'm gonna do a bit of a read aloud today because we just need to enjoy a book together. All right, we are on chapter 17. About four miles from home, Norman was getting tired from pedaling with Fluffy's weight behind the bike. He hadn't planned, he had not planned to run away. When he got home that afternoon, he looked at Fluffy and thought about how in only four days, his plant would be taken away. It wasn't fair. Dad and mom were being so mean. Anger swept over him. On the spur of the moment, he thought, if I run away with Fluffy, nobody can take him away from me. There was nobody there to stop him. Michael would probably be home any minute, so he had to hurry. He packed, wrote the note, and was speeding away with Fluffy in tow within five minutes. As he pedaled away, he thought, they'll be really sorry when they find out I'm gone. When Mrs. Smith asked him where he was going, he almost told her he was running away, but he didn't, even though he half hoped she would talk him out of it. He was so angry, he just wanted to keep going. I just remembered something important. I'm reading a book, so you should go wash your hands with soap and water and then get your snack. Just saying, I mean, I'm reading to you, so you probably have a snack. As he passed Bob's house, he slowed up, hoping Bob would see him and run out and ask where he was going. But Bob didn't come out. Norman kept pedaling. The street slanted slightly uphill, so pulling Fluffy was not easy. As his anger wore off, Norman realized that he had no idea where he was going. He had been so upset that he hadn't given it any thought. He just wanted to get away and save Fluffy. After a while, there were more and more cars on the road. He saw the park sign, so he turned off there and stopped under a big tree to eat his baked bean sandwich. When he sat down, the ground was wet, so he had to stand up to eat. He told Fluffy, don't worry, I brought plenty of socks for you to eat. Fluffy put a vine around Norman's shoulder. Norman had no idea what to do next. He was still hungry, so he ate a banana and dropped the peel on the ground. Norman never littered, but now he did not care. He drank a can of juice and dropped the empty can next to the plastic sandwich bag in the banana peel. He leaned against Fluffy for comfort. I don't know where we're going, he told the plant. I don't know what to do. It was a beautiful fall afternoon, but it was getting chilly. Some trees were still green, but many were turning gold, orange, red, and brown. Joggers and bicyclists kept coming by. Most of them glanced at Norman as they passed. What they saw was a boy standing under a big tree and beside a large plant, which from a distance appeared to be growing there. On the handlebar of the bike propped against the tree hung a small duffel bag. So no one noticed that Norman was running away. But all those people looking at him made Norman nervous. What if somebody stopped him and asked what he was doing? Or what if some weirdo tried to kidnap him? He looked into the woods where colored leaves carpeted the ground and a path led deeper into the trees. An arrow-shaped sign that said, Lookout Point, pointed to the path. He decided to go that way, away from the road. The going was slow. The beaten dirt path had many muddy places. It was a bumpy ride for Fluffy. His skateboard wheels became clogged with mud and wet leaves. He tipped over a couple of times. Norman got all muddy using his fingers to scrape the junk off Fluffy's wheels. Finally, after many such stops, they emerged from the woods. Ahead was an asphalt road and parking places with yellow stripes. Beyond that, there was a sign that said Lookout Point on a thick brown wooden railing and a vast view of the sky with puffy white clouds. Norman realized this place must be sort of high up. Pulling up to the railing, which was the height of his shoulders, he looked over. He was on top of a cliff ledge that sloped down on the other side of the railing. Spread out below him were thick green treetops. Beyond those, he saw little houses and buildings and streets where tiny cars and trucks and buses ran like small bugs. Norman wondered if he could camp out in the park, but he wasn't prepared for that. He didn't even have a blanket, and a cold night would surely make Fluffy sick. Norman had no idea where to go, but he couldn't turn around and go back home. He hoped that by now they would be looking for him. Norman had lost all track of time. He looked at his Mickey Mouse watch and found it was 5.15.
Then he recalled that mom's note said she would be home at 5.30. So maybe she didn't even know yet. But if Michael was home by now, surely he would have called mom and dad so they could all start looking. But what if Michael hadn't come home yet? That meant nobody was looking for him yet. Norman's heart sank. They had to come after him, they had to. But then terrible thoughts began going through his head. He wondered, what if Michael wants to have our room all to himself? What if he's glad that I ran away? What if he tore up my note so mom and dad won't know what happened to me? What if mom and dad read my note but won't come looking to teach me a lesson? Tears spilled from his eyes. He hadn't packed any tissues, so he wiped his eyes and nose on his jacket sleeve. Fluffy patted him on the head and stroked his hair. Norman threw his arms around Fluffy and Fluffy threw his vines around Norman. Soon Norman was feeling a bit better. He pictured mom being horrified when she read his note at 5.30. My precious baby, she would cry because that's what she used to call him when he was little. She hadn't called him that lately because he didn't want to be called a baby. She would say, he, we have to find him and let him keep his plant. Dad would come home and call the police. They would all run out of the house looking for him. Michael would lead the police on his bicycle. Maybe the police would put out an APB and search parties. That would be good because that way he could get found a lot faster and in time for dinner. Norman told Fluffy, we have to go back closer to home so they can find us, but we better wait till 530. Now that he had decided how to get found, he felt somewhat cheered up. His watch said 520. But time was going by very slowly. He decided to wait until 5.35 to give mom time to get in the house, go in the kitchen, read the note, in case Michael hadn't already found it. He started humming and then broke into singing, Oh, Susanna, hitting a few wrong notes as usual. Fluffy waved a vine in time to the music and rustled his feathers happily. After Norman sang the song three times, he lost interest and turned back to the railing to enjoy the view again. Nearby, he noticed, on the other side of the railing, was a straggly little tree growing up over the edge of the cliff. He recognized its fan-shaped leaves. If he had one of those leaves, he could get Michael to give him something he wanted in exchange for it. The nearest leaves were just out of his reach, so he ducked under the railing. As he stepped near the edge, he cautiously held onto the railing with one hand and reached as far as he could with the other but no matter how hard he stretched, the leaves were still about six inches from his fingertips. So Norman let go of the railing just for a moment, balanced himself carefully and took one step closer. As he snapped the leaf off, the soil and flaked rock beneath him crumbled. His feet began sliding. Norman twisted his body around to grab the railing, but his feet went out from under him and he landed on his stomach. With his fingers digging into the crumbling surface, the harder he tried to get a foothold, the more dirt and rock fell away. Fluffy, cried Norman, help, help. He slid a little farther. Fluffy just stood there on the other side of the railing as if he were puzzled about what Norman meant. Norman's finger started sliding, making claw marks in the dirt. Grab Fluffy, grab, he shrieked. With a couple of vines, Fluffy firmly grabbed the railing. No, me, shouted Norman. Fluffy, grab me. The giant plant leaned against the railing and whirled all of his other vines in all directions except down where Norman was. Grab down here, Norman called. Fluffy kept whirling in confusion. He had never grabbed below ground level and he was having trouble getting the idea. Frantically, Norman grabbed at a clump of weeds he had slid within reach, but it pulled loose in his hand. Then in spite of his total panic, it dawned on him that he should keep up a steady sound for Fluffy to follow. He was scared out of his mind, but he began singing one of his and Fluffy's favorite songs. Camp down, ladies, sing this song. He howled slightly off key. Do-da, do-da. His voice was shaking, but he kept going. Fluffy started whirling and started reaching around lower. He was almost there. Norman noticed he was near the bottom. Holding on to that little tree would keep him from sliding anymore. Fluffy would reach him in a second. Camp Town raised tracks five miles long, he sang bravely. Oh, a doo day When his right hand closed around the little tree, its shallow roots ripped free. He let go and the tree fell away. He tried not to think about how far down it was falling. He slid a little more. 
To his horror, he felt his feet lose touch with the cliff and dangle in midair. But the next moment, he stopped falling with a jolt as strong, as strong vines wrapped his feet and middle. Fluffy held on him to him all, with all the strength he could muster. Norman called, Thanks, Fluffy! I love you! Now that he was securely cradled in Fluffy's vines, he tried to scramble back up, but he couldn't. Pull up, Fluffy! Pull! he instructed. Fluffy tried, but one vine broke with a snap. Stop! called Norman. Just hold on! The plant held on. Norman was stuck, but at least he was safe for as long as Fluffy could hold him. After he calmed down a little, he looked at his watch. 537. They must be looking for him by now. He hoped somebody would come soon. He and Fluffy could use a whole search party to get them out of this. To keep himself and Fluffy encouraged while they waited, he sang a few doodahs from time to time. Every few minutes, he also yelled, help, in case anyone could hear him. You'll have to wait until another day for the next chapter.